Coming up this week on Ralph and Vicky's Archer's Choice. You know, a hunt's not just about going out and killing something. It's about all of God's creation. It's being able to take it all in and process it and realize how fortunate and blessed we are to be able to have the opportunities to go out there and do what we do. How do you share an adventure like we witnessed and experienced for our first time in Utah elk hunting? I know, this was a crazy thing. We met Curl Ranch Outfitters, Carol, oh. at a Cabela's grand opening in Utah. Yep. You know, and they had- Clint and Christine know, came by. Right, they, they know us from a mutual friend, Dave Munch, and they're like, we really want you guys to come out and hunt. And well, you know what? The tags they had was one bull tag for Vicky, and then Ralph got a cow tag, what? which is fine, you know, because why it's, is it it's fine? It's meat in the freezer. Why is it's it meat, fine? It's meat in the freezer. But it was really unique, which we had no idea because they were showing us photos and then we got there and they're also a rescue for exotic animals. So like llamas and miniature like brahmas and just crazy things. I mean you Animals this, that don't like you at times, like well, Elvis. They really don't like Ralph. Yeah, this at all. this this but dude scares me. There's so much we gotta share with you. This is actually gonna be two episodes. And we're sitting Clint actually, and Greg, I mean, they know they live on here. I mean right, this is their the ranch. ranch. They, it is. This is unbelievable what we what we saw, what yeah, we so, witnessed and experienced. And it ain't just about elk though. No, because no. you had some other things coming into water holes too. Like, Anyways, we just need to get rolling because there's way this, too much. Utah. K R O. Check this out. Utah, often called the crossroads of the West. Its geography spotlights remarkable land features such as the Rocky Mountains, five national parks, and six national forests. This desert landscape yields more than just sandstone arches and rock formations. It's also one of America's best kept secrets for hunting destinations. Big game opportunities include mule deer, antelope, elk, and even moose. Ralph and Vicki have voyaged to Northern Utah. Adjacent to the picturesque Bear Lake lies Curl Ranch Outfitters, Remarkably, the ranch has been around since the late 1800s and will be the place the crew calls home as they pursue the great North American elk. We got everything ready. We started, you know, making sure our Hoyts are ready to go and everything. We pack everything up and we head down to Utah. Now, I've never hunted Utah. Ralph's never hunted Utah. So this is a brand new experience for us and we're not really sure what to expect. I keep asking Ralph, like, are we hunting mountains? Are we hunting valleys? Are, are we hunting tree stands? Do I need a harness? Are we hunting ground blinds? What do we need to do? And he goes, I don't know, just be ready for anything, Vic. You know, you're talking about KRO. Who knows what's gonna happen? Our hunting operation, uh, we actually started being serious about it in 1996. Obviously, I've hunted here my entire life. And uh, right now we're trying to uh, manage the place for, for a little bit bigger animal and, and we've been able to do that. We hunt approximately 15,000 acres of private ground. Uh, it's all pretty much uh, shut right down and no trespassing, that kind of thing. And we've done that so that we can manage it. We, we uh, look at it every year, try and figure out how many mule deer we could take and how many elk we could take, moose, that kind of thing. It's working out real well for us. We, we could take a lot more animals than we do, but we're trying to get it into a, a, a higher quality animal so everybody is, is satisfied with what they get. It's, uh, it's turned out real well for us, and uh, we plan on doing it for, uh, for a long time. We got Beeman Easton, we got Hoyt, we got Browning, we got everybody here, and you know, we, we just, we, Vicki and I have never had the opportunity. Well, when, when, when we met Clint and Chris, and I mean, we, we just, we knew, we knew we had to try this. As anticipation grows to get out in the field for the afternoon, Ralph and Vicki prepare their gear and ensure their trusty Hoyts are sighted in.
We're gonna have fun, boys and girls. First afternoon out, KRO Outfitters. We are going to look for some elk. We are, I have no idea which way we're going. We're going to go hunt a water hole, so. I don't know if we're going that way. If we're going that way. Greg's got the truck parking that way, so I don't know. I have no idea. I know that we're gonna to get to the platform and we're gonna be hunting a water hole this afternoon. It's pretty warm out, but the temperature's gonna drop and it's pretty windy, so I have some extra clothes. I have a little bit of everything extra on my pack. Tomorrow I'll probably won't come out with half of what I have in my pack. First night hunt, it's the way it goes. Unless of course we tag out tonight, then I wouldn't have to worry about packing out tomorrow. We'll go ahead and hike on up in there. It's just up here a little ways. Okay. First afternoon, we're set to go and we have to wear our hunter safety systems. We're going to sit up in a platform over wallows in a water hole. I've hunted elk before, I've hiked my booty off before trying to get an elk. I have one elk under my belt, so I'm not really sure what to expect. And we get up in this platform and I can't tell you, I mean, the wallows below us were amazing and you just knew, I mean, oh, what a great feeling. You know something's going to happen, something's going to come in here. It's our first afternoon to sit at KRO Outfitters. It's 3.38. We got in here, Greg brought us in. He made sure everything was good up here on the platform. Climb up in the stand. I got up in the stand, just hung my bow up, still had on my sling and everything. Kenneth, Greg are at the bottom, and a seven by seven walks in. I'm trying to get everything done. I don't have a release on, I don't have a range finder. My bow is still hanging with everything on it. Anyways, the wind kind of swirled and he ran off. Greg said it was a shooter, so I'm hurrying up. So he runs off. Kenneth gets up. We get everything set up. We're like, okay, let's let's get this hunt going. As we're saying, let's get this hunt going, a young five by five just walked in, drank, looked around, and just went up the hill. Now I just heard a bugle up there, and I'm wondering if that wasn't him that just bugled up there. It's pretty. Th I mean, it's open here over this walla. There's a water drainage that's going through here. It's a beautiful setup. The wind is in our favor. Obviously it can swirl, but they're gonna come in, drink, and hopefully present me a shot. Up where that big white quakey is laying across is 28 yards. That's about gonna be my farthest shot from where I'm sitting right now. It's kind of strange hunting elk from a tree stand, but you know what? It's a beautiful setup and why not? It's warm this afternoon. We're in Utah, northern Utah, and uh, feeling kind of elky out here. With no additional action, Vicki continues to wait for an opportunity. Meanwhile, Ralph is set up next to a water hole in a ground blind, hoping for a chance to take a cow elk. But before long, an unexpected guest shows up. I'm sitting in this water hole. Chad and I are there, and we hear some noise. We're like, yeah, baby. <laughs> a moose comes in. And then another moose comes in. And a little bit later, another moose comes in. So I didn't know if I fell asleep and I woke up in the Yukon. I really wasn't sure what was going on, but sure enough, I mean, I, I don't know how many moose we had come in. I mean, we, it was just absolutely amazing for, for what we experienced for our first sit. 
And you, you're like, I, I can't wait till our next sit. As the adage goes, the hunter that travels out into the woods is lost to the world, yet finds himself. Over the years, Ralph and Vicki have done just that. And after a restful night of slumber, the crew is ready for another day out in the Badlands. So we'd be, we'd come back and, and, and you know, we would, we would tell Clint and Greg, you know, well, here's what we saw. And, and they're like, would you give it one more shot? Because they got trail camera pictures. These guys know what's going on, where the, all this game's coming in. We're like, guys, we don't guide the guide. You tell us, we'll do it. Well, we changed our approach today. What we did is Clint dropped us down probably, I don't know, half a mile down. So we walked up the ridge. Our wind's coming this way. This is our actually third, third sit. If the wind dies down, it should be a good evening. I think even if the wind doesn't die down, it's gonna be a good evening. And we're sitting there. We had mule deer come in and everything and all the wind was just swirling. It was killing us. And we had these mule deer busting us. And, and, and you know, it, it was just, not, what, what are you gonna do? You know what they're smelling? That other doe set an alarm scent. They got a whiff up, look at her. See? Well, all of a sudden, Chad goes, and I'm like, okay. And I couldn't see because where I was sitting, and lo and behold, we have a big old cow. She comes out of the, the dark timber and she's slowly working her way. She comes back and forth and she's just meandering. I mean, just slowly checking everything out. And also like, like you know, seeing that, she might also sense that those mule deer sort of spooked and, and everything. Well, finally she committed. And when she committed, I was ready, man. After having a large cow elk commit to coming into the water hole, Ralph draws back his Hoyt and decides to take a shot. We wait about 25, 30 minutes, text Clint, 
say, hey, buddy, got a cow down. And I think we wrecked his plans because I think he was going to go and pick up Vicky first. And I'm not sure how that worked, but he was like, oh, really? And I was like, yeah. So as we're waiting, Chad goes, elk. Bull, 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 bull. I could hear him getting more excited. He's excited. I'm excited. Bull starts slowly coming in, comes in, goes out, comes in, starts drinking, starts wallowing. I mean, this is all in front of us at 25 yards. And then all of a sudden, whoa, again. Up above us, here comes a bull moose. One we haven't even seen before. Now, mind you, I think we've seen six or eight moose already. But we have this bull comes walking right by, goes right in the water. Here's a beautiful bull moose, beautiful bull elk, and they're sharing the same water hole right in front of us. Remember this. K-R-O. And we're just living the dream. And I mean, it's just crazy. And then all of a sudden, the bull elk chases the moose out. Bull elk leaves, bull moose comes in, starts drinking again, and Clint pulls up, and if we look at him, the moose walks away. Here's what I can tell you. The Curl Ranch is unbelievable. Moose, elk, deer, seen anything like this. You dog baby. Clint's coming up. <laughs> Folks, we are at the curve. Curve. <laughs> I can't I can't explain what we've experienced in three sits. And I mean, we get on it, we, we get on our trail. It was a, because of the high entrance and a, a good exit, you know, we, we, we found blood right on the sage, walked right up to her. Yo, <laughs> whoa, she's right there here. She is. She's right here, buddy. There she is. Oh my gosh, man. Look at this. Man, I, that Hellraiser went right through her. I was a hair high. I was I was for right here. Yeah, but it had to get the tops of both lungs. Yeah, both lungs, because she went what? I'm less than 100 yards. Yeah. And the road is right down there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, what do we do? Guys, Good job. I am telling you, K R O Utah, baby. More than anything. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for guiding me, and thanks for bringing us to Clinton, man. <laughs> this is good, I'm, I'm so happy. To say we were pumped would be very minimal. We, we were jacked, it was awesome, man. It was just, what, what a great experience, what a great opportunity. My first time bow hunting in Utah, and I mean, to, to see all this, to experience it, even if it's only, if you can only get a cow tag, you need to check this out. Congratulations. Thank you. I had a blast. I got to tell you, I never expected to see that many moose, though. No, I mean, I can't even imagine. You're sitting in a ground blind. You're sitting there, like, just waiting. You're waiting for elk to come through, and all of a sudden you look, and there's a moose. Yeah, and we, we had a young bull, bull, bull elk come in, wallowed. He just did everything, and it was funny because he paired off, you know, with the, with the moose. I mean, right. just everything about it was just yeah, awesome. Yeah, KRO, I mean, Crow Ranch Outfitters. Clint, Christine, Greg, amazing wow. people. And we have more to share with you for next week because I'm up still. Yeah. I haven't filled my bull tag yet, so we'll have to see if we do. You notice if that I do, bull we tag. need more elk meat in the freezer, I'm sure. Right? Ooh, uh, that cow was pretty big. It, it was pretty she big. Filled so it up pretty we want to thank you guys for watching this week. We'll see you next week. Same time. Same channel. Right here with Vicki and Ralph in Utah with KRO doing some elk hunting. Choice is yours. Freezer. I chose mine. Choice Ralph and Vicki. Style.